Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a Second Star interview. Today, I am joined by the author and illustrator of Brown is Beautiful. You could purchase the link or purchase the book, excuse me, by clicking the link below or hopefully wherever books are sold. Uh, why don't we take this time for you both to introduce yourselves and share each of your journeys for bringing this book to life? Uh, my name is Supriya Kirakur, and I am the author of Brown is Beautiful. Um, I am the author of novels and picture books for kids. And I came up with the idea for Brown is Beautiful in 2018. And it was a time when hate was really being encouraged and emboldened by people in power. And I wanted to write something that really challenged that message that was empowering to kids and readers of all ages, that was affirming and that inspired them to recognize the inner beauty and the beauty around them. Um, and that is how the idea for Brown is Beautiful was born. And I wanted to write it in a lyrical way, in a way that could be used in classrooms around the country without challenges um, and in a way that we could really uplift a lot of people. So. That's how the book, the words and the text part of the book came to be. And then um, I think Noor can share with us how the art came to be. Yeah. Um, so I primarily worked in animation before this book. This is my first book I've illustrated. And I always wanted to illustrate. I think it just seemed like a really great way to connect with kids. And um, just well, it was something that just seemed really fun. And so when this project came forward, I was really excited by it because it was something that really applied to me and like certain things like I grew up with and struggled with and um, being able to illustrate this book, I think I learned a lot about ways to appreciate color and people who have grown up being colored and um, how this, like making these illustrations could help um, create a positive effect on children and those who are growing up in similar ways that I grew up. And I loved like trying to, all the words that Supriya wrote and like being able to bring that to life through my illustrations. Um, and I loved like illustrating the autumn scenes. I love the autumn. I realized it was my favorite season as I was illustrating this book. So I was like, wow, these colors are so beautiful. And like the ways you can make like a page sing by just finding the different color combinations that can showcase the beauty of this color. So Yeah, the art truly captures the words, and I, I agree, the words are very lyrical. Like, I, I'm waiting for the song version <laughs> to come out that goes along with it. It is a wonderful book, and I think it'll be such a great read for every kid, and uh, we do a story time at our store, so it'll definitely be one of the ones that is read at story time. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of bookstores are trying to truly diversify their shelves, making sure whoever walks in can see themselves in a book. Brown is Beautiful is definitely helping that cause, but how should bookstores really step up their game in including everyone? Uh, um, did you want to go first? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so I what I've noticed in the last few years, every time I walk into a bookstore, I've noticed so much more representation in terms of like color and LGBTQ and like all these different uh, minority groups that I guess didn't have a voice before. And it's so great to be able to like walk into a bookstore and like see sections like specifically amplifying those voices. And so I think bookstores have been making a bigger effort to um, showcase those voices now, which is great. And I guess like the best way is just like to keep doing what they're doing. Um, and I think like, yeah, just lending a voice to those people, helping people to, well, I think like the best part about bookstores or libraries is that it's through reading that I think people grow stronger empathy towards other parties and gain a better understanding of how other people think and like other people's situations. And so I think if bookstores keep doing that, sharing those stories, it's gonna help the world become better friends with each other. It's gonna help people get along better. Um, so just keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, we're both so grateful to, to you and to all the independent bookstores who do so much for diverse voices and uplift us and these books. Um, and I think, you know, simple things like facing those books out or writing shelf talkers for them um, 
monthly book clubs featuring diverse books and um, bookstore subscription boxes featuring diverse books. I think all of those things can um, just add to it and help um, boost and amplify these voices and make sure that every kid gets to see themselves in a book. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's always good advice. And yeah, because we we try and do different things, but it's always nice to hear like how we can keep working on it and keep doing it and hearing feedback. So thank you both for that. Um, Brown is Beautiful focuses on sharing the beauty, embracing the beauty with the next generation. Besides books and art, what are some other ways you are both passing along this message to the next generation? Um, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s in a town that really wasn't diverse and didn't value diversity. Um, and at that time, there was zero representation for South Asian Americans in, um, in the media, not in TV shows or movies, except for one very racist TV show um, depiction. And um, if you're around my age, you were bullied for that character every single day in school, and there was no representation in books. And um, I, you know, we had a rock thrown through our window. There was um, racial bullying every single day. So I did not embrace the beauty within me at all. I was actually really, um, I loved who I was at home and at school, I was just deeply ashamed and embarrassed because of what was going on in school every day. So, um, as and it wasn't until college that that turned around for me and I was able to reconcile both sides and be really proud of who I was as a whole. Um, so I have three children in elementary school and um, one of the things I do is I make sure they embrace the beauty around us by through books, by reading diverse books, even though I know I'm not supposed to say books, um, and by having discussions um, about tough topics. And I also, um, I dress up in my Indian clothes anytime our family has a holiday and I pick my kids up in those clothes. And we live in the same town I grew up in. And although it's doubled in size and it's very diverse now, it still has a problem with hate like any town in America does. And it's really this act of resistance for me, um, dressing up in Indian clothes and in the very spot where I was bullied for being Indian. And to my kids, it's just normal. And they're just happy to see me. And they're proud that I'm like fully decked out um, in, in Indian clothes for our holidays in public. And I think little steps like that can help us all um, be proud of who we are and celebrate each other and our diversity and our different cultures and religions and traditions. Yes. Um, I think um, well, making this story and I guess growing up in a I think I'm I grew up in a very in an area where I was kind of the only Indian kid also. And I think growing up, I didn't know how to appreciate that. Um, it always felt like at home, it was like a different world. And then you step out of your house and it's just a completely different world. And you had to learn to like blend in with both. Um, otherwise you're like different and weird. Um, and I don't think I like really understood like what my culture meant. And like, the I never really st understood the beauty of it. And so I felt like when I was young, like I didn't really know how to mesh with it until like as I've gotten older I've like learned to appreciate it more and um I'm trying to like build a stronger connection with it and I think something that like I've been learning to do is just to not feel so like uncomfortable with it I guess like learning to share it more and like not feeling like I need to like step back and like hide it from people um now I live in LA where it's very diverse and like people are not as like weirded out by that and that's not to say that even people in small towns feel that way they're actually like when I think back on it I think I felt like a natural shame that wasn't there all the time like I think people were naturally curious about it and it was just like me kind of projecting that on myself but um I think like the best thing any of us can do is like realize that everybody has qualities that make them different and that make them stand out and I think people are curious about that and like it's part of what makes you you and if we were to like step forward and showcase those parts of ourselves um it would help the world and people like understand one another better and like to make friends with each other um and so something i try to do is when i 
meet people, um, I guess I try to like find out what those little quirks or differences that they have, or if they come from a different cultural background or something, like just ask questions. I think the more you ask questions, the more you understand a person and the more like you, the two of you can build a friendship and like maybe that person will feel more comfortable and you'll feel more comfortable with them and people can just learn to understand each other better. Well, thank you both for sharing that because a lot of that was personal. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Sapria, what about storytelling inspires you and nor what about being an artist inspires you? Um, I guess for me, I because I, I know we grew up so similarly, um, Nora and I, um, because I, we didn't have that representation, and I'll say because I didn't have that representation, um, every story I wrote as a kid featured a, a kid with yellow Crayola hair because I didn't ever think someone like me could be the hero of a story. And I, I never touched that brown crayon. Um, it was reserved for drawing trees and houses and dogs and never people. Um, and so for me, storytelling is so important because growing up without representation, I know how much it means to kids and adults to finally be able to see themselves in a book. Um, I see it every day in school visits um, when kids who are South Asian and kids who aren't tell me that they were able to see themselves in one of my books. So for me, storytelling is really key to building that empathy that Noor was talking about before, to building connections and to making kids realize just how very much they matter. Um, yes. Almost exact same thing with me. I never drew brown people when I was young. And I think that was just like a subconscious thing. Um, I think like on media, I only ever saw people that like weren't brown on there. And like, for some reason, I it like clicked in my head that I was like, oh, like brown people aren't main characters. And like, uh, so if I ever make stories, like they're not the main characters. And like, as a kid, that's just like how I grew up thinking. And it wasn't until I got older, where I was like, no, like they don't have to be like white or like other, like they can be brown, it's fine. Um, and it was, it's been interesting like the last few years seeing more representation. Cause it's just like, oh, okay. Like this is what it feels like to see yourself in a character and like how empowering that can be. And so um, I've been drawing more brown people in like my artwork and that that is like a big um, thing that drives me is like wanting to create more representation in that aspect and to see could like I don't think people realize like how powerful it can be to see somebody that looks like you achieve great things and like to see a protagonist be scared and to see them overcome their fears and do something brave. Um, because it really inspires you to believe that you can also be that person. Um, and so I think that really drives me. I love storytelling. I love reading books. And I love like just seeing somebody do something that they thought was impossible before. And I think it'd be great to create, help create stories that um, inspire people to believe they can do brave things. Well, I believe this interview could definitely go on for hours because you both have such wonderful things to say that need to be heard. Um, but we do have to wrap this up, so I do apologize. But if you could each leave our viewers with any piece of advice today, what would that be? I think um, if I had to leave, any, if you guys, oh, sorry, if I had to leave you guys with advice, it would be just to like take a moment to listen to each other and try to make friends with people. Be kind to everybody um, because you really don't know what people are going through. And I think if we, it doesn't have to be big acts. It could be small acts of kindness. Um, I, but I think even the smallest acts can make biggest the biggest change in this world. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I would tell any of our viewers today who are also writers that your story is really important and make sure you tell it and you're the hero of your story. So you have to tell that story. Well, thank you both so much. I'm excited that this book is out into the world and that we get to share it with everyone. So thank you both so much for joining me today and I will talk to you all later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.